I love that sound. It's the sound of water. It kind of sounds like a roaring in the sky, but it's actually this little mini waterfall. Anyway, I've got an email to read. Let's read it. Um, hi, Kurt. As usual, as always, I'll keep private stuff private. Hi, Kurt. I've been contemplating emailing you for a while. I held back as I would like, as I feel like I would be at another person burdening you. I wanted to uh, stop there for a second. I, I feel bad because I don't get back to people quickly. And it's never a problem to receive email. And I'm delighted that every, you, know, you get through the email, just going through the email, and looking at you, know, junk, junk, junk. Oh, something personal. I love that stuff. And my problem is that I'm just, I'm so slow to get back. So if you can bear with me, um, you know, if you send me an email, if you can bear with me on uh, waiting to hear from me, then um, I have to thank you very much. Um, even though you don't seem to mind in your videos, I don't. I can imagine that it takes quite some effort to respond to everyone. Yeah, you just, you just said what I said, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> First off, I'd like to give you a big thank you for making your videos, especially your Lyle's Brother videos and a lot of your response videos. I find them interesting, inspiring, and feel like I'm not alone in my view of the world. Thank you for being so open and sharing your thoughts on subjects that most people never speak about, let alone in such a public setting. Yeah. Like, like I sometimes say, you know, my, for the most part, my life's open. If it, if it wasn't a family man, you wouldn't believe how open I'd be. But I do have to uh, protect the privacy of my of those that are connected to me. So, uh, I don't know why. It just, it just, it just feels. I don't know. It just, just feels liberating and natural. How does that must to uh, to be open in a way? Liberating isn't quite the right word. It's just, just. At this point in my life, I just like, what's to lose, you know? <laughs> I don't want to get too in-depth about my own problems, but overall, I'm currently going through a period of depression. Probably milder than some, but quite persistent over many years. Well, as someone who's gone through depression, I can tell you, mild or not, it's a tough uh, road to hoe in any case. So I, you know, I have some sympathy regardless of the level. Over the past year, I stumbled upon a certain comorbid, that's a new word for me, comorbid, co comorbid, I'll have to look that one up, condition multiple times, and have only recently read more about it. I'd always dismissed it simply because of its title. Obviously, self-diagnosis, oh, maybe that's a medical condition. Obviously, self-diagnosis is not a good idea, I agree, and I'm still trying to find the willpower to seek out a counselor. So far, I've only gone to a general practitioner. I have a real issue discussing personal issues, especially mental health. I can't get over the stigma. Yeah, I remember that too. I remember when I wanted to see a, someone to help me. I think that was in my early 30s. And I really felt uncomfortable about that. And that kind of goes away too. Maybe it's practice. Just, you know, just doing it and it gets easier over time. Anyway, like you say in your videos, there's no, there's no diplomas behind me but I have a wild hunch that maybe this condition applies to you too. Of course, I could be totally wrong, but I feel like I should write to you anyway. Here's two lists of symptoms at both ends of the spectrum. I associate most with the first list. It's possible to associate with one list or more with both lists. So I, are these, I'm assuming these lists come from some medical journal or something you found? Here we go through the first list, procrastination. I'll just pause between bullet points. Procrastination. Indecision. A difficulty recalling and organizing details required for a task. Poor time management. Losing track of time. Avoiding tasks or jobs that require sustained attention. Low road or high road? High road today. Avoiding tasks or jobs that require... That wasn't in the list. <laughs> that require sustained attention. Difficult. There I am. I, I, it can't seem to keep my, my attention, so I guess that answers your question, huh? Difficulty initiating tasks. Difficulty completing and following through on tasks. Difficulty multitasking. Difficulty shifting attention from one task to another. Confusion and a sense of feeling constantly overwhelmed. Loss of short-term memory. Not being able to relax. Over, uh, overall fatigue and loss of energy. Increased impatience and irritability. Well, we just finished the first list. And my, my first thought after reading that list is, who isn't like that? I mean, unless you're like a you know, independently wealthy, you know, <clears throat> rock star or <clears throat> trust fund kid. Well, he doesn't have to get up in the morning and go to work. <clears throat> he doesn't have a lot of responsibilities to 
feeding water. That's, I think that list just about describes everybody I've ever known. <clears throat> Certainly me. It's like, it's like a list of the, you know, characteristics of the, uh, of the, of the average work a day man and woman. So let's get on to the second list. Choose highly active stimulating jobs. Avoid situations with low physical activity or sedentary work. You may choose to work long hours or two jobs. Seeks constant activity. Easily bored, impatient. Intolerant to frustration, easily irritated. Impulsive, snap decisions and irresponsible behaviors. Loses temper easily, angers quickly. Can we finish the second list? Uh, I, I, now, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss. I don't know what the distinction, how these lists, uh, maybe I missed something in the first part of the message, how these lists apply. The second list definitely is a characteristic, is a character type that I recognize, I, I, that I think I fit into quite nicely. Um, I fit into both, clearly. But, you know, but there's a great big distinction between the two lists. The first is basically the, the, the effects that, that being a responsible, persistent, and, uh, uh, dare I repeat myself, responsibly minded adult, that's the characteristics of their life. The second list is, the, is this type of person that uh, I, I, consider my, I consider like adventurers and, uh, and those who have the, the restless mind for, 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 for new and stimulating things in life. So the spider's got to see, this is, used to be a hobo chair here. And here's a big spider. And a hobo used to live over there, but no more. This is a fish. Let's go on, maybe we can weed this out. Interestingly, some of the non-medication... Oh, and by the way, in the second list there and the first list, I found that uh, the, the negative elements of those lists, the things that are, were in there, I was able to address through uh, diet and healthy living. So if that's the question, we'll see. Interestingly, some of the non-medication treatments, AIDS, include exercise, being in nature, hiking, and diet. Especially cutting out stimulants, sugar, and getting more protein. Exactly. It's exactly what I found to work. You know, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. It's just, it's just that, uh, I mean, it's common sense, right? I mean, I mean, if you say you have an automobile and you're, you, you put... You put salt in the gasoline, or, or oh, too much sugar, it's going to run like crap. Because <laughs> it's not made for those things, you know. <laughs> give, it, give it good, good, uh, good, uh, you know, quality fuel, and it'll run well, just like us. These symptoms, while not a complete list, are all part of the ADHD. That would be an attention deficit hyperactive disorder. I always dismiss it when I stumbled upon it online, as I'm not at all hyperactive. It turns out that a part from the classic ADHD, there is an inattentive, inattentive subtype without hyperactivity. As well, interesting, an inattentive subtype without hyperactivity. As well as a combined type. I'd be really interested if you associate with the symptoms. I guess I, I can't really speculate, like you, you said, you know, not being a professional. I guess in a way, before. Not, not so much anymore. I mean, definitely the, the character traits are definitely there, but the symptoms, not, 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 not really anymore. Those have gone away. The biggest problem I have, for the most part, not all completely, the biggest problem I have is my complete lack of sustained interest in anything. I can have periods of two to three months where I can completely de devote myself to something and then suddenly lose all interest. Apparently, hyperfocus is also a symptom of ADHD. I feel this is a major, my major problem. It kills me that I can be so interested in something and then suddenly never want to do it again. Anyway, I think I wrote entirely too much. Best of luck with the course you are about to study. I'm halfway through it, thank you. I know you are getting, as soon as I've just walked on, I'll get back to it. I know you said you will focus on it completely and don't cut out the exercise, thanks. And I'll leave uh, the name. So, yeah, that's a good one, right there, right? I mean, uh, you know, the, I'm glad you brought up the course because when I first started this course uh, three weeks ago, I was yeah, gung ho, you know, I was getting to it, and I was all excited about it, as well as for the thing that I'm trying to achieve through the course. I basically lost interest in it. You know, I, I don't want to do it anymore. I woke up this morning, I, I don't want to study. You know, and, and even the, the thing that I'm after, it's like, ah, whatever. It goes one way or the other. That's so, I, I bring that up because it, for me, I'll just show you it. 
49 years old, that ha that characteristic hasn't changed. I mean, I'm still that same way that, that you know, two or three months into something or a short period of time gung-ho about something and then want to give it up. I think that's another another human characteristic. I, and, and it probably is more so of those of us. Smell the fire. There's a farmer uh, cooking uh, waste debris. See the smoke right there? Smell that, man. It smells nice here in the autumn. Common smell up in the woods. Farm, farmer stuff. I think that's just another character trait, another human trait, and it's the only, and I don't think you necessarily get over it. Some people have a concerted, are able, seem to be able to maintain a sustained focus um, on, on things, uh, but I think that they, what they're basically doing is exercising willpower through the downtime. I mean, even the best writers, look at the fire, you can see the smoke coming up now, and the farm, farmer's right behind it, can you see the farmer in the smoke? It smells nice. I mean, even the best writers have periods of... Uh, Writer's block, artist block. There's days that anybody, even even rock stars, don't want to go on stage sometimes, right? <laughs> I think for the most part, the stuff that you've just shared with me is instead of being uh, a, a description of exception of of exceptional cases, I think it's pretty much a description of most of us. How most of us are. The. Uh, only reasonable thing to do with it is to, if you one, if you suspect there's some medical condition behind it, to seek seek out advice of a professional and find out if that's the case. And if not, then it's a matter of uh, of simply deciding whether or not you want to live a life uh, that is a, a roller coaster, as you give in to the whims or lack there or lack of interest, or whether you want to. Uh, exercise some sustained effort to uh, create things and to build and maintain a life that you that you're after you know like today I'm I don't want to study but I'll I will like I don't want to, I didn't want to walk this walk I didn't want to eat my salad this morning but I do these things every day you know, this is a weekend so I can walk in the mountains on weekdays I, I take time between my classes and I do laps around this cool lap track and I'll get back and I'll do my studying and I'll finish that and I'll get that Certification, if I can pass the class, I'll do it. If I don't pass it the first time, I'll try again the second time. And, and hopefully that will lead to the thing that I'm after. Will it, will it mean that it was a, an easier road from A to B? Not at all. Will it mean that uh, uh, continued difficulty? With other things coming up? You betcha. Well, hold on, we're just going to show you this. There's people coming. Take a look at this beautiful pasture land. See over here the uh, rice. This is the rice that's uh, hanging on the things to dry. This was all here. The typhoon came through and knocked it all down. How was I, Mas? The typhoon came and knocked it all down the other day, but they picked it back up. And the farmer, I'm sure the farmer didn't want to do all of this. Look at all that. There's some man, probably a man, maybe a woman, but most likely a man. This is his, his thing. You know, in Japan, the kanji, the Japanese symbol for man, is, and this is kind of, this might strike some as sexist, but it's just the reality. The woman figure is a, is a figure of a human being, and she's pregnant but with a child, right? I mean, think of, you know, back in the day when these things were made, I mean, that was a woman's big function, right? To keep the species going, so to speak. A man, the symbol for a man, was a, again a figure of a human being, but he's got a rice field, the character for a rice field, above his head. He's supporting a rice field. That was the figure for a man. And imagine that rice farming is hard work. I don't think they want to get up every day necessarily. A farmer get up and, and you know before dawn and get out here and do all this stuff, especially back in the days before machinery and tools and uh, pesticides and all that stuff. Um, but that must have been a lot of hard work. But they, but they did it. It was it was just a, it was just a matter of sustained effort past the uh, difficulty and the challenges. Whether they felt uh, anxious or uh, or uncertain. The successful ones uh, uh, pers persisted through because they had others depending on them, and it was their livelihood. And, and the, the only other option was, was, was probably uh, death. <laughs> so uh, we don't face the same extremes anymore necessarily. I mean, there are few of us in the first world that are going to die for our inactivity. So we have some options to be lazier or less less active and less uh, engaged in our own life. But um, I think that the, the list that you described, which shows how most of us are is a challenge that uh, we can either uh, address through uh, uh, looking for professional help if we have some medical problem, uh, choosing a better diet and activity level that uh, will help us get on top of things, and then above all, exercising the willpower to simply hold up a rice field of our own, 
hold up something of our own, make, hold up, possess whatever it is that we choose to take on in life. If it's not a rice field, maybe it's a career or a, an artistic endeavor, maybe it's the support of a family, maybe some uh, worthy cause, and uh, see that through. Uh, to the best of our ability, to the end of our days, through the good days and the bad days. I'll tell you what, I'm going to use the inspiration that uh, you've given me through this uh, letter to uh, push through my own challenge, my own little rice field that I'm carrying on the top of my shoulders and move on. I hope you do the same, friend. Thanks for writing. Thanks for challenging, challenging me with a, uh, an interesting thought. I love it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.